This week on Sister Wives, Cody and Christine deal with their stuff, Janelle admits living in the trailer is difficult, and the Eyebrow Twins discuss how unfair the divorce is to them. Hello and welcome to Reality Recapped, where I recap all of the trashiest reality shows. If you're new here, my name is Heather and I have a degree in psychology. It's through that lens that I watch this show and make my comments. Of course, I have not met with any of these people and so the comments I make are only my opinion. My channel offers a little bit of education and a lot of snark. The episode opens with a rainy, gray day in Flagstaff. Christine is in her garage, organizing her things and loading stuff into her car. Cody tells us, Christine's been hassling me for months to get all my stuff out of her garage. This big thing on my plate, I don't know what to do. Well, you could move your stuff. That's what you could do. It's not that complicated. If I had not boxed Cody's stuff up and moved it to the garage, he would have never gotten to it. I don't actually have a space of my own. I don't have a place to put this. I don't have a corner. I don't have anything. Mmm, pretty sure that's not true. Thing, you live in a million dollar home. You have three wives and 17 children. What do you mean you don't have anything? Sounds like Robin is trying to set a limit with Cody and judging from her lower window in this picture, he is winning the hoarding war. Just go through your boxes, eliminate, purge. It's what everybody else does that only has one house. You can do it too. I believe in you. Well, he's not, he doesn't have stuff at Mary's house. He hasn't for years. He hasn't stayed there for years. He can't have stuff at Janelle's house because she lives in a little tiny trailer. So he has quadruple what he needs at Robin's house. It's just a polygamy thing, I guess. Anyone else think Robin is so sick of Cody being at her house? Yeah, that face says it all. So Christine just reminded me of something about Janelle's trailer and Cody's stuff that I wanted to bring up. You guys are quite clever and we're so onto this. And when this was pointed out to me, I'm like, duh, I can't believe I didn't think of this. On my video telling truly, Ben Charlie commented, wait, think about it. What Janelle is doing is pure genius. She knew Cody wouldn't want to stay with her in the RV. It proved it was not about Garrison and Gabriel. It's about Robin. Think Janelle doesn't know that Robin is the favorite? Think again. No, there's a plan there. Just wait for it. And then the last line says, that woman is jonesy to keep Cody out of her head, bed, and life. <laughs> and beneath that, Kissa Rococo said she probably wants less drama with her breakup, so she takes it baby steps. And oh my goodness, what a clever way to separate from your husband, have no conflict over what's happening. Clearly you have to get rid of all this stuff, right? And you're downsizing. And oh man, if this was her idea of how to break up without a lot of drama, Janelle is brilliant, just freaking brilliant. This could be a new marriage ending technique, like a, we have to think of a name for it though. The trailer marriage derailer, the five wheeler new lifer, <laughs> that's terrible um oh how about the rv kiss goodbye she gave me an rv kiss goodbye can you believe it <laughs> do you guys have any ideas <laughs> comment down below i have an emotional attachment to this house yes i do listen i have an emotional attachment to christine his face is so funny. That's the face he makes when he declares with emphasis that he has an emotional attachment to Christine. Uh, I assume that what we're doing is we're splitting all of our assets, the house, the land, the everything we've got 50-50, <laughs> which is funny because she's already sold off some of the stuff that was ours. That is funny. Like what? Like furniture? Like she got rid of furniture that was yours? Surprising he doesn't elaborate further. I mean, if you have concrete examples, why not provide them, right? So I'm kind of doubting his story here. So my name is on the property and I also have this house. So yeah. to split 50-50, how about if we just cut it and I keep everything from the house and the family keeps everything from the property. I don't need anything from the property. But You're ready to sell this place. Yes. Uh, right now, my name is the only name on this house. A lot of playboys women don't have assets in their name. In plural marriage, there's a tendency for the wives to own the assets because if dad goes to jail for a cohabitation, they're gonna take all the property. So they're both saying opposite things. And based on Cody's behavior in the past, we know that he'll lie to get his way. So I'm gonna believe Christine on this one. Christine's walking away with her money from this house. In this deal, she'll be able to buy another house. Janelle can't do anything on Coyote Pass until we pay it off. If you split everything 50-50, that means I get 50% of everything that he has. 
all of his property. That means his and Robin's house too, if he wants to go down the road and split it that way. That doesn't make any sense. Let's just make it clean and easy. I get the house, you can have the property. And it's just, it's easier. Okay, all right. It works. That sounds like a good deal. Do you think it's, oh. that'll, that'll work nice and clean. I'm so happy that he agreed to this. It is much cleaner and really Christine could be a jerk here and go after the property that her name is jointly on. He would have no recourse if she just sold the house. His name isn't on it. I agreed to it. We're done. We're moving forward. It's not the most fair scenario. The problem is this Coyote Pass isn't paid off. So she's walking away with the money we would have paid off Coyote Pass with. She's got that. She's given us her lot, but we still have to pay off Coyote Pass. His logic is pretty funny. So you want Christine to leave, give you Coyote Pass, and pay it off before she goes? That seems fair to you? I don't even know if he believes that that's fair, but he always lays in the line of like, well, Janelle can't even build on there, which isn't true. If you keep the property lines the way that they are, she could build right now, currently, as is. But like always, Cody makes even the most simple things really complicated. I think it's fair that Christine is taking her equity. We gave family money to Christine, we gave family money to Robin to buy her house. About the same amount to both of them. And honestly, the equity stake that Christine has in our property, the, the Coyote Pass property, is about equal to what the equity is in her home. This is easy, this is a really clean transaction. Cody asks Christine, what is she gonna do with her bedroom set? And Christine says, oh, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm not going to take it with me. She says that she's getting rid of things that have memories tied to Cody because she wants to start fresh. She doesn't want to be reminded of the past. She wants to move forward. And I agree, there's not enough sage in the world to cleanse those bedroom sets. Cody says he's in shock that she's getting rid of everything and that the house, the memories, everything, it just feels like he's pretending for the camera to have some sort of sadness about this when the reality is he set all of this forth in motion. I think he's just doing this as, as a PR thing. I don't think he really feels bad that she's leaving. I think he wanted her to leave. I think he pushed her out. I think he's trying to push Janelle out. I think he's trying to push Mary out. So uh, this is what he's wanting. I think he's just trying to do a little bit of PR for himself. I have been in the RV full time for a month. Taking care of your basic necessities is a lot more work than when I live in town somewhere, but I love being out here. Uh, living in a trailer is an absolute inconvenience. I think it might be fun for Janelle. It's like every day she's dealing with one new problem. I have to haul eight of these in order to fill my water tank. And the water tank lasts us about a day and a half if we're conservative been a challenge. I, there's just no chance I want to sit here and say, I told you so, or gloat. I'm not going to gloat in any of that. It's more like it's sad. This adjustment is huge, and it's harder for me because Savannah is struggling. I'm not sure this is sustainable unless I can really bring this to some sort of even keel because she's miserable. She's still on board. She wants to get the house built, so she's here. Like, but I know that it's been rough on her. I hope that everything gets easier for Janelle out on Coyote Pass. And we're going to leave her and go to Mary and Robin, who are discussing the fact that they're being left to and how the divorce is impacting them. How's it going? Good, how are you? Uh, I'm okay. There's this heavy weight between us because we know that our family is just getting messed with like crazy. How's it going? Um, that's, it's weird. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Robin says it's weird a lot to describe just about everything. And I think it frustrates me because it's a way of saying words that don't really communicate anything. Um, yeah, it's weird. I mean, that can mean so many different things. You be, are you sad? Is that what you mean? Are you angry? Is that what you mean? I think she doesn't share her emotions 
very often. So I, th- and I think she's bottled up. So both of them who both do that, having a discussion about how this is impacting them is comical and weird. You didn't say a whole lot. My, did I read you right? Just real frustrated. I didn't trust myself to say anything, to be honest with you. It's her relationship with him. Yeah, and but so it, like, I feel it affects like us, though. It does. It totally affects us. But, like, it's more about him. Supposedly, it doesn't affect us because we're not a part of their relationship. But that's bullcrap. And watch this big bomb going off in my family. Of course, when a relationship ends and you're in this kind of polygamous Um, system, of course it's going to affect you. But what I wish that they would talk about is the fact that one of the tenets that they always said was part of being a sister wife is being aware of your other sister wives and their needs and wanting your husband to give to the other wives as equally as he's giving to you. And of course that didn't happen. And that ended up undermining all of the other relationships. And Robin is sitting with, with Mary who has not had a true husband for over 12 years and knows that. And it just, this just feels so twisted to me. It's like Christine's the bad person because she's leaving and she's destroying our family. When the reality is Robin is benefiting and getting most of the money, most of the attention. She's setting down rules and Cody is following them. And she's doing all of this at the cost of everybody else, all the other relationships, and no one's calling her out on it, which is really frustrating. I'm not really sure we have a family anymore. It just seems like it's this big change of venue, and I don't know what it looks like now. We still have a family. Christine's just not in it. Why weren't these two talking it out? Stay on the couch. Fight for her. Obviously, you don't care enough to fight for her. Obviously, you didn't care enough to fight for me. And I don't understand that. I'm feeling betrayed. I can't imagine what Cody's feeling. Cody is now questioning me left and right about things that I thought he knew about me. Like he's struggling to trust everybody around him. You're going through a divorce with Christine, but you have marriages that you have to maintain. He still has us and he still has marriages with us and he still has to fix them and figure them out and get over his anger enough to actually interact appropriately or he's going to ruin every single one of them. It sounds like Robin is finally experiencing what it's actually like to be a wife to Cody. This is the way that he's treated everybody else for 12 plus years. Robin's been getting different treatment and better treatment this whole time. It'll be very interesting to watch her in the future if he continues to treat her the way that he's been treating everybody else. I guarantee you she's not going to be talking about sticking it out if that's the case. She's going to do what she did with her last marriage and leave, just like any sane person would. I'm going through a divorce. Just give me a little time to be sad and angry and go through this process. I'll get over it, I think. Why is she coming to the family if she's going to do this after? And she didn't even talk to me about it. I agreed to be a sister wife, but I agreed to be an equal wife. More than a sister wife, I felt like that she was a friend for a lot of years. And then now just all of a sudden, everybody's just changing their mind because it was hard. She wasn't. She just wanted to be more than equal. She wanted to be loved without giving love. I think what Mary isn't saying is probably something that we're all thinking, which is I've been struggling and I've been suffering for a very long time. I've been essentially single and kind of an outcast this whole time. And I haven't left because I'm committed to this way of life. I wonder if part of her anger is subconsciously toward herself for staying. And I wonder if she's going to have a different opinion um, moving forward about what she should do and what, how she's supposed to live her life. I don't think anyone should live their life with somebody who doesn't value them. It's much better to just move on. And it doesn't mean that you're, you're fickle. It means that the person that you're with isn't holding up their end. Why is there no conversation about what Cody's end is it's like he's absolved of any responsibility it doesn't make sense and it's frustrating the work that you've done the sacrifices you've made why would you say well you have to stay even though you're unhappy this is a big change the the family as we know it no longer exists it's just so familiar 
and I've seen Cody give up on me and him. I didn't give up on Mary. It just turned out that the relationship was essentially unstable. I just didn't feel like it was tenable. It's not a functional relationship. And we can get along, but we can't be together. How can he say that, that he didn't give up, and then go on to say how he gave up on the relationship? It's like, he just has no responsibility on anything ever. I really hope that this prompts Mary to reassess what she's going to do and whether she's going to stay. And why would you be more committed to your marriage than your husband? That makes no sense. People have asked me, people are always asking me, like, why do you stay? You don't have a relationship with them. I think on it and I pray on it and I meditate on it and I always come to a peace with it. I'm just grateful that you're sticking it out. Hang on with me, okay? I am. We have to rebuild. We have to rebuild. Robin goes on to say that she really wanted polygamy for herself and she really wanted it for her kids. She wanted them to grow up in this lifestyle. And this underscores the issue with Robin. Robin doesn't really care about Mary. Robin cares about herself. Robin wants what she wants. And she doesn't care that Mary is miserable. And it's really sad that the only person in the family that acts like she's on her side isn't. She's completely self-interested. She's completely selfish. You should not see somebody in pain like this and encourage them to stay. I think Robin is such a selfish piece of, ugh, I'm really, really angry right now. Really frustrated. I just have to watch as they destroy what I wanted. I would never do anything to this family to hurt it. I just wish that people could see that. I think if she were to watch the show, she might have a different perspective. I don't know. I don't know how open she is to actually like reality and what's actually going on. I think she's very um, self-interested and I think she's kind of deluding herself about her role. She is not responsible completely for dismantling these relationships. Obviously, Cody is the one who's going to bear the brunt of that responsibility, but she definitely did things that undermined, like going on a two-week honeymoon when none of the wives got anything more than like three days. Th those special treatments that she got never stopped. And I think she doesn't even understand that. You know, when I came to the family, I saw this, like, big group family team experience. I wanted to play a role, an important role in that. I was a single mom. I had three kids, 10 on down. My divorce had really shook me. I kind of said to myself, you know, I don't really care so much about the romantic part of a relationship, I cared about whether or not he was a good husband, a good man. I cared about what I was going to give to my children. Like that was my ultimate and biggest, most important thing. Well, if I was Robin, I'd be very concerned because she's seeing how he treats his wives and it's not good. And eventually this is gonna happen to her too. She was the young, shiny new thing that came in and she will be devalued as well. It's it's not just going to be the other wives. There's there's a system, and he's already, it seems like he's already directing anger toward her, which I don't think she's had to deal with before. So I think when she's talking about rebuilding, if they're talking about bringing in more wives, and these are going to be younger wives, they're going to be new to, new to him. And you know how that is. When you're dating somebody new, it's exciting. You get at the infatuation stage. We watched him go through it with Robin, and she will end up being in the same exact situation, and I wonder what she's going to be saying then. Cody used to say to me all the time, why do you have these emotions when you know that it's right, that they're in the family? Why do you feel like this? I'm like, because I'm human. Yeah. If I were to be giving attention to another guy, how would it make you feel? The vulgarity of the idea of you with two husbands or another lover um, sickens me. I don't know why they're going back to this. Like, I feel like their bigger issue isn't the fact that, Didi, that Cody is dating multiple women 
I think the bigger issue is that he's unfair to each and every one of them. He prefers one. So I just feel like because it's a polygamy show that they're going to always return to this topic. The truth is is that Cody is not going to do well in any marriage, whether it's monogamy or whether it's polygamy. He doesn't have um, traits that I think would make for a good husband doesn't mean that people can't hang in there and make their marriage last but it i don't think that it's going to be a fulfilling marriage i don't really care if cody thinks he wouldn't be jealous i guarantee you he would be he would not be okay with his wives having other partners because everything's about cody and we've definitely figured that out for sure confuse the kids like crazy it's gonna mess with the kids yeah and she's like oh they're all for it and I don't know what that means. That means they're hearing one side of the story. Yeah, I know that. Nobody has asked me my side of the story. The only people that have gotten my side of the story, Robin and Mary, and maybe Janelle. So every wife has your side of the story. What are you expecting your kids to come around and ask you what your side of the divorce is when you haven't been in their lives at all? It's, but if they're so concerned about why am I leaving and what about being a sister wife? Why wouldn't they talk to me personally? The only one who reached out to me was Janelle. So it sounds like Mary and Robin expect to be talked to and reached out to, but they don't do that for other people. So that's a problem. I worry a lot about what they're going to say to the kids. I feel like there's an opportunity when a divorce happens to kind of let sleeping dogs lie. Don't bring up stuff that makes the kids feel like they have to pick a side. But I feel like those two are going to create situations where the kids feel like there's blame being attached to different people. And I worry for the kids because of them, not necessarily because of the divorce. Even though divorce can be hard on kids, even if it's not a good marriage, um, it can still be challenging for kids to go through that. But drawing battle lines and creating sides is so much worse for kids. So from this, we move on to Cody and his friend, who is also his work partner. I have never met a work partner at a game, ever. Um, I guess that's how people are finding business associates now. Who knew? Um, So they're driving back from some show, uh, and again, Cody is going on trips. He... He picks and chooses what he does and doesn't do. And um, I'm sure this is going to, that would have been really frustrating for Isabel. And so they're talking about how Cody was behaving at the wedding and that he, you know, was losing his sight on like marriage and asking his friend. Um, He said he only asked him once um, if he was sure. And his friend said that was kind of um, concerning right before the wedding. Today I sold my bed. I didn't want to take it with me. I just want to start all over with a bedroom set. As I was laying in bed, I just thought, you know, this is the last night I'm going to be in this bed. Reflected and let myself remember good times in this bed and hard times in this bed and giving birth to my babies in this bed. It was bittersweet. That was, it was harder than I thought it would be. I was really hurt when Christine told me she was selling the bedroom set. But yeah, it broke my heart. It was just one more thing, uh, this awareness. I mean, I've still been in this place. I'm not buying what he's selling. It just feels like more PR work. I think he knows he's coming off pretty bad and pretty um, unsympathetic. And I think this is just his move to try to seem like he's a full-feeling human being. Cody says he feels pathetic because he's the divorce denier and she's clear on the slate and getting out of here and she has like a woohoo kind of excitement about her. And yeah, she does. I'm excited for her too. I have a woohoo for her as well. She's going to have such a better life without him. The best years of my life I gave to him and he shrugged his shoulders at me. I gave Christine the best years of my life too. I hope that I can find love again. I hope that I can be in a relationship with someone who loves me. What I do know is that I would rather be alone and love myself than to be with someone who doesn't love me. I couldn't agree more with her. 
that um, to be alone is not the worst thing. To be in a bad relationship really is hard. Isabel and Trulia and I are going to get into a car and it definitely weighs on you in ways that you don't even realize until you get out of it. And you're like, oh my gosh, why did I deal with that for so long? And Axel and Evie and go to school in North Carolina. I'm so glad we get one last adventure together. Excited, Maddie and Caleb are really, really incredible people. Going where my dad and mom didn't have that great of a relationship to somebody who has an incredible relationship. Isabel's going to go live with a couple who is monogamous. Caleb's home all the time. He's only focused on Maddie and those babies. Her parents' relationship hasn't been good for many years. So I think it could be healing. I think it could be good. From the bottom of my heart, I hope this is a good situation for Isabel. I hope she is safe in the home, and I hope she feels safe there, and I hope she feels protected there. I really wish her the best. My dad isn't coming with us. He has children here in Flagstaff, so it's not like he can also be away for that long. Also, like, there's still COVID around, unfortunately. Isabel tries her best to kind of cover her dad because she knows this isn't going to look good for him. I wouldn't want to travel with Christine at this point. It's done and it's over, and she's moving on, and I'm finally willing to accept that, but I'm not going to take a trip with her. Cody just shoots himself in the foot. You know, it's, you have to love your child more than you hate your ex-wife. And he's the one who's eroding this relationship. It would have meant so much to Isabel if he would have done this with her. I'm really sad that, but not surprised that he's continuing to disappoint her. The hardest part of my whole life is that my kids don't have a great relationship with their dad. He doesn't even know him. You know what's sad too is they don't know how amazing he is either. Cody has this awesome side to him that my kids don't know and who I fell in love with. Of course, he's not that person anymore, neither am I. It's sad all around. Thank you. I love you. I love you, we'll see you. I'll see you later. You guys have a good trip. Listen, I have 18 kids. I'm spread thin. I work hard to visit with my children, to connect with them, to do something with them that they like. It's not always an easy connection. I'm sitting here going, reflecting on what could have been done differently and what has happened to us, what's happened to my life, what has happened to my purpose and, and the things that I was pursuing before because I feel so distant from it. It's hard leaving not knowing when I'm going to see him again. Oh my God. How you doing, Love Muffin? Oh my God. I'm, I don't know when I'm going to be back here. I'm sad I didn't get to say goodbye to like Janelle and her kids. Mari and Saul. Yeah, it's rough. Isabel moving is the hardest. She's just moving so far, and I don't know when I'm going to see her again. Next month, I'm going to be moving to Utah, and I don't know what that looks like. And so I think half of this is everything is so uncertain, because my life is uncertain completely. That wraps up the episode for this week, you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing Christine moving on, and I think she's going to be much happier and have a great time in her new life. If you have any comments, any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to go back through things, um, cover things that maybe weren't clear. Um, I really appreciate everyone's participation. You guys have been really encouraging. You've also been really respectful. It's a really nice space. I like how you're all talking to one another too. Um, I really appreciate the respect everyone's showing for one another and it's been really nice. So I wish you a great week. I hope you're doing well. Until next time.